Hello there, and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with another The Hunter Call of the Wild video. Now, today's video is going to be a selection of highlight clips from the past few days, and we're starting off here on Quattro Kalinus, where once again I have been searching for an albino wild boar, but once again I have ended up finding yet another couple of black gold wild boar here in Call of the Wild. This one was here on Quattro Kalinus, as you can see, just a little level 1 female. Obviously, these are still a rare, so they are still cool to come across, and a lot of people actually have a very tough time finding them. I just seem to get really lucky with finding these and really unlucky with finding albinos but i did also find another one here on hirschfelden now this one was a level three male and unfortunately yet again this one did not have a chance at making gold but it was quite cool to actually see one out here in the fields on hirschfelden so i am gonna take a couple of screenshots because like i said these are a really beautiful animal and they are a proper rare they're not an uncommon or anything like that i just seem to find a lot of these and not no albinos which is what i'm really looking for but this guy is a silver level three and i wasn't sure whether this guy was actually bigger than the other level three male that i shot so i did end up just saving this guy but a nice double long shot there from the 308 brought him down nice and quickly now moving over to a clip from Yukon Valley where as I had mentioned in a previous video I have been looking for a couple of rare wolves really I'm looking for an albino for one of the multi mounts in my trophy lodge and as you can see we have a couple of packs of wolves here and unfortunately they did have the defensive bug as they were sort of going into that state where they should be fleeing they go into a defensive state and then they just stand there and as you will have just seen, there was actually a nine legendary amongst this group of wolves. Now, there's really nothing I can do about the fact that they are bugged like this. And obviously, I'm not going to just leave a max level animal when it's just stood there. This is multiplayer as per normal. Most of these clips, actually all of the clips in this video are from multiplayer. So it's not like I can just go and reset the time and hope that they'll, uh, they'll move around or whatever. Because yeah, these guys were just frozen. So... All I have to do really is to just shoot it. And this guy does actually end up being a diamond at 39.30, which was really nice as the last two level 9 grey wolves I shot actually ended up being trolls. It's so unfortunate that they have that bug where they go defensive at the moment. And it's not all of the wolves. I have been attacked by some wolves. Um, but it just seems that when I find a trophy one, they end up going defensive and it's really a big shame. But moving over from Yukon Valley on onto Mississippi Acres, where we're going to be taking a look at a couple of whitetail clips. Now, I normally ignore whitetail these days just because I have so many trophy whitetail from when I did my Great One grinds. However, when I saw this level 3, I could not resist taking a shot at this guy. That is a massive massive buck and i knew that he had a very good chance at being max weight and 270 plus which is a really really good trophy and i'm not just gonna let that one pass and you know let someone else shoot it i really wanted to get this guy on the ground myself and looking at, at him on the ground he really did look to be a really good size and picking him up sure enough he is max weight which is what i was expecting with this rack and he is 270 plus he is 271.70 so i will tax that my uh, thing with whitetail is i tend to only tax whitetail that are 270 plus these days because i just do have so many diamonds from those great one grinds but finding a buck like this is always still really exciting that is a really really good looking buck that is a beautiful set of antlers and yeah he's just awesome looking and when i saw that huge set of antlers i did think maybe it was a great one for a second but as soon as i got a good look at it i knew that he was big and so weirdly on the same server probably within about 150 to 200 meters as i was running this coast looking for gators there was a second level three now this guy is not as big as the other level three that we just took down i knew he wouldn't be in that 270 area but he was going to be a diamond there was no doubt in my mind with this rack he will be a diamond and this rack that he's got is also quite interesting looking 
I have had this rack on previous diamonds that I've shot, but how the true racks has actually sort of affected this rack with those times that are sort of pointing outwards just looks a little bit different to some of the other trophy white tail I've shot in the past. So I did actually end up taxing this guy just because he looked a little bit different. And yeah, it was just crazy to get two diamonds within that sort of distance of each other. I really, really wasn't expecting that. And it was nice to actually shoot a couple of diamond whitetail again. Now for this next clip, we are heading over to Silver Ridge Peaks, where I have been spending quite a lot of time in different Silver Ridge Peaks multiplayer servers recently, in search of an albino pronghorn for the Trophy Lodge, and also looking to improve my leucistic pronghorn in the Trophy Lodge, as I only have a female leucistic in there at the moment, and it would be nice to replace it with a decent sized male if possible at some point. But as you can see right now, we're not taking a look at Pronghorn, we're actually taking a look at a level 4 Dilute Mule Deer. Now, Dilute Mule Deer did not used to be rare, they used to be an uncommon, and you'd see them all the time. They were quite, an, uh, quite a common uncommon, if that makes sense. You'd see them all the time with Mule Deer. It was cool if you could get like a diamond one, but other than that, they weren't extremely noteworthy. Very beautiful looking animal, but like I said, they were quite easy to find. Since the update that actually changed the rarity of certain fur types, these guys have actually become a proper rare. You don't see these anywhere near as much as you used to. In fact, since that change, I think I've seen one very, very small, I think level two buck, and a couple of does, and that's been it. So when I saw this really good size, what should be a gold level four, I was actually really quite excited because I've always really liked the dilute mule deer and I was never fortunate enough to get a diamond one when they were an uncommon. I really did try but never got lucky enough. So when I actually saw this guy, I was quite excited because now these are a rare, I can put him in my trophy lodge that has just rares and diamonds and you know it's an actual proper rare so it fits in there and from what I can tell in real life this is a very rare thing to see so why this used to be an uncommon in Call of the Wild I, I just don't know similar to the blue bobcats they should have never been an uncommon I don't think these should have ever been either and I'm really happy that these are now an actual proper rare because it just gives them that little bit of you know being an actual rare makes it more exciting to find one so I was really really happy with that and that's a really nice addition to the trophy lodge now, taking a look at another animal that basically used to be an uncommon that never should have been an uncommon, and we are actually taking a look at some pronghorn. Now, there's a very specific pronghorn buck in this herd, which you're going to notice straight away. He is very, very different to the rest as he comes out of the shadows there. That is a piebald pronghorn buck. Now, piebald pronghorn, again, very, very rare in real life, but in Call of the Wild, they used to be basically an uncommon. They used to be absolutely everywhere when Silver Ridge Peaks initially released. And I always thought it was a really big shame because I always thought that these looked cool, but I never used to actually bother shooting them because, again, they used to be an uncommon, same as the piebald Rocky Mountain Elk. But these are now a proper rare, and I have been shooting a lot of pronghorn recently, and I have only seen a couple of piebalds. And this guy was actually the first decent sized piebald male I had seen, so I was actually really excited to take this guy down. And like I said, now we can appreciate this for being a rare. Same with the dilute mule deer, so it's cool to actually find one. And I really like that, and I think it's a really positive change. And let's now take a look at this guy and just appreciate how beautiful this is. Because this patterning is absolutely stunning. Like, these are really, really, really gorgeous. And again, really happy to now have an excuse, basically, to add one to the trophy lodge. Because when they were just an uncommon, I didn't really want to add them to my rares and diamonds trophy lodge but now that they're a proper rare they fit in there just the same as the dilute mule deer and honestly these are absolutely stunning animals this pattern particularly because there is a different pattern as well for the piebald pronghorn which we will be taking a look at in a second but this is definitely my favorite pattern for them and i think it is just absolutely stunning all the different tones of the different color browns and almost reddish color mixed in with the white and there's also sort of darker tones in there as well really really stunning animal and like i said these are very very rare in real life piebald pronghorn are extremely rare same as the dilute mule deer so again 
really po- like pleased to see that positive change making these guys a rare. Now, I did say we would be taking a look at the other piebald variation for Pronghorn, and yep, that's what we're going to be doing right now. That right there is a little female piebald Pronghorn, and she has the other pattern, which is a lot less, uh, it's less prominent than the piebald that we just took a look at. This one is a lot more subtle and actually can be quite easily missed if you're not really paying that much attention. But if you look on the shoulder region, you can see you have these sort of very prominent white splotches. And that's the uh, the piebald aspect of this pattern, which I think actually looks really cool. And I did actually see a very small male with this pattern, but it was at a point where I wasn't sure if these had become a full-on rare yet. And I was kind of making my mind up as to how rare these were. But now I've spent a long time hunting these guys, I can fully say these are a proper rare now. I don't say, you know, oh, this is this has become a rare or something in one of my videos without actually going and spending a lot of time hunting that animal and getting some experience before I actually say it. So these are a rare now. If you see one, definitely worth shooting and taxing for your lodge because, yeah, they are definitely a proper rare. I've shot hundreds of pronghorn recently on my single player and not had a single piebald pop up. But I've seen a couple of couple in multiplayer, probably about the same as a piebald whitetail, maybe even less. But really, really happy to get those for the Trophy Lodge. Now, for these next couple of clips, we are heading over to Frahonga Savannah, where I have been spending a lot of time recently hunting Cape Buffalo. Now, I've been hunting the Cape Buffalo for a couple of reasons. One, I would like to get a couple of bigger rares for the Trophy Lodge. I have a very small female leucistic and a smallish gold level 6 male albino. So I really would like to get some improvements for both of those, but especially for the leucistic, if I can. And I always hope that maybe one day I could find a super rare cape. I think that would be really cool. And I have actually been considering grinding Cape Buffalo now that they're so easy to find along the coast. Just, just to see if I could get one to maybe pop up. But I have been finding a lot of diamonds. And as you will have just seen, we did just take down this small horns 154.10 scoring diamond there. I had a little bit of pressure to make that shot nice and quick as I did have that other one that was aggressive. But did manage to get a nice shot on him and bring him down nice and quick. Now, moving on to another Diamond Cape Buffalo, and there was no doubt that this guy is going to be a Diamond. This is a Big Horns Level 9 Cape Buffalo, and these guys always do get me so excited when I see them. They are just so cool. My heart always does just skip a little bit of a beat when I see those bigger horns, because this is just an epic animal. And as he turns there, gives me a lovely broadside shot. And as you can see, again, he's going down nice and quick from that vital hit. I like to get a little bit closer with the Cape Buffalo these days than I perhaps used to, just because the 300 does have some penetration issues. But I do still favour the 300 as my Cape Buffalo gun. So I like to just get that little bit closer, just make sure that I'm going to get that little bit better penetration. And as you can see, I don't really have that many issues. So there we go. Nice shot there. A single lung into his right lung. 158.40 scoring Big Horns Diamond Cape. That is an absolute beauty. These guys are just so, so cool. I love the Cape Buffalo so much. They're just they're just one of my favourite animals in the game. And I think it is because Cape Buffalo have this notoriety of just being such a, a big, powerful, a super aggressive animal. And I just think all of that makes them so cool for me to hunt personally. And I never get bored of just seeing a huge looking diamond like this. They're just awesome. And this is another big horns diamond. This time a grey fur type. And again, no doubt he's going to make diamond with those horns. He's a 156 scoring, really cool looking diamond. Kind of an odd position to actually get that shot just as he was going to turn a little bit further. But again, getting through to that single lung brought him down nice and fast. And yeah, just look at the horns on that. They are absolutely epic. There is no denying that that is one of the coolest diamonds in this game. And if I could get a leucistic or an albino one, especially with the bigger horns, I honestly don't know what I'd do if I saw that on in this game. I think I'd 
probably pass out from excitement though saying that i'd probably do that if i came across any potential super rare these days it's becoming a bit of a running joke that i never get lucky enough to find super rares hopefully one day that will be a thing but i was doing the same thing running along the coast looking for hopefully some bigger rare cape buffalo or you know maybe even a super rare and i ended up finding this guy this is a nine legendary smaller horns brown cape buffalo but even though he's got the smaller horns, he's got a pretty interesting estimate there with a 152 minimum estimate, meaning this guy is actually a guaranteed diamond. And he's actually only the second ever legendary brown cape buffalo I've come across. The first was a big horns brown cape buffalo, which you guys may remember from a few months back, which was actually when the brown cape buffalo were actually harder to find than they are now. And it ended up being max weight and max score. And that is still one of my favorite trophies in my lodge even though with the fur type update they did make brown cape buffalo a little bit more common they're still an uncommon but they are a little bit more common than they used to be you see a lot more of these about now this is still a really cool thing to find and i still love that big horns one in my trophy lodge that was such a cool memory of just seeing that massive animal with a pretty much you know almost guaranteed to be max score estimate it was incredible so when I saw this guy, it reminded me of that experience and I was really, really excited. I waited there for the shot opportunity that I felt comfortable with and I kept it nice and far back to make sure I didn't hit the skull, got through to the liver, the liver, the back of the lung there and the stomach and he is a 152.60. So not far above that minimum estimate, but he was guaranteed to be a diamond. So I had to make, make sure that I got that nice shot into the vitals there. And that's why I just waited until i was comfortable and that shot is a little bit further back than i would perhaps like but it was still enough to get through to the vitals and i wasn't going to take a second shot and risk hitting him in the skull and losing the diamond that is my second ever diamond brown cape buffalo and i was super happy to get that now moving on to this next clip and we are here on Leighton Lakes where I had a pretty cool experience with a really stunning animal and I'm really looking forward to getting to share this clip with you guys. So I could just see this group of cow elk moving over there as they were heading to their drink zone and I was pretty sure that I spotted an albino amongst them and sure enough as I came around this corner and looked and I could see all these tracks for their drink zone there was an albino cow with them. So I decided, okay, they're right next to some brush and it is a female, so they're a little bit less aware than if this was, say, a level four or level five bull. They're not going to be quite as aware of my presence because they are a level one female. And I thought this would be a pretty good opportunity to try and get some screenshots of this beautiful albino female because I... You know, I don't necessarily need another albino female for my trophy lodges, as I do now have an albino bull in my main trophy lodge, but I do still think it's cool to find any rare animal. And I think a lot of times the female rares get really underappreciated and we go, ah, it's just a female boo you know well, i would like a, a bull with really big impressive antlers or you know something with the, the big horns if it's like a cape buffalo or something but you know it's still a rare animal to find by definition this is a rare thing to see and i think that they are still really beautiful and i think sometimes the female animals you know they can be really elegant looking and then they just get really underappreciated because we're so focused on looking for those high trophy ratings so sometimes when i find an animal like this and it's just giving me a perfect opportunity to do some photography and just to slow down and just appreciate it for being a cool and rare thing to find i do like to take those opportunities because i'm quite often i'm really focused on you know trying to find rares and diamonds and cool stuff to put in a video and you know it can be quite hectic going from multiplayer server to multiplayer server and really fast paced and it's just nice sometimes to slow down and do some photography <laughs> of an animal like this because I'm never going to get, you know, really a cooler experience than when she's out here walking around and you can just see this beautiful white elk in the middle of just a herd of commons. I think the contrast is really stunning. And here I managed to get quite a cool picture in my mind of her drinking. And I know it's weird to say drinking when they're, 
they've got their heads buried in the grass or their noses buried in the grass rather to say drinking but they are actually drinking there but if you imagine that was a pair of elk feeding and you've got the common one next to the albino one i just think that contrast is really cool so i ended up getting some really nice pictures of her but of course at the end of the day this is a hunting game we are going to shoot her um like i said i'm not necessarily going to tax it for any of my lodges as i i have a couple of these guys taxed um for the female albinos if it was a bull obviously i would tax it and I, that's basically what i was saying before but it is just a, another female i don't really have as much space for another female but we are still going to take her down there with the 300 and that shot actually did land into the vitals so she really didn't go very far before she dropped unfortunately she landed all sort of twisted up there but she is still a real beauty an albino roosevelt elk and the rare roosevelt elk are quite rare to see whether they are male or female so i think that was a really neat experience and for me the trophy there wasn't wasn't really shooting the animal and you know this is the trophy i think more the experience was the trophy in that case and i think that that was just really cool maybe it's just me i just really liked that experience now moving on to the final animal of this video which came along with a really cool experience so as you guys can see i'm being charged by a couple of aggressive wild boar here which in and of itself isn't extremely common you don't always see aggressive wild boar i've had a few recently but they don't always go aggressive, so it's quite a cool thing when they actually do. And the second one that charged me out of these two females, I thought that one looks really dark. That looks like a melanistic. And I was thinking back to the one I shot on Medved not too long ago. You guys may remember it from a previous video. And I was thinking, this looks the same. I'm sure this is a melanistic. And it was running around in circles at this point. And I was trying to line up to get a nice shot on it with the 308. But I didn't really want to take a shot and accidentally hit it in the skull. Because I do like to get the full score out of cool rares like this. Even though it is just a level 2 female, I wanted to get the full score. And she did actually manage to kill me there. And I thought, right, I'm going to go back there. And I'll pick up the track. And sure enough, it said melanistic. You can see that in the top right of the screen. Melanistic wild boar. Now, just how that all works out, melanistic wild boar are very, 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 very rare. You do not see a lot of them. In fact, a lot of people don't even know these guys exist. And then to get charged by it and killed by it, which in and of itself, again, is an, an extremely common thing. You do see it decently often, but not extreme, like all the time. So I was really, really excited that i actually got killed by a melanistic wild boar because with all of those factors of it being a melanistic and it going aggressive that's quite a rare thing and to me that's really cool and i know that might sound dumb but i really really did think that was cool and i had session host of this multiplayer so i didn't really have to worry too much and did manage to get the full silver out of her there with a perfect heart shot, which I was really happy with. Again, that's something I don't do a lot, is heart shots on wild boar, just because of how their head sort of positions in front of their chest. Getting a heart shot can be quite tricky, but because of her being on that hill and me sort of having that upwards angle sort of looking up under her chin, I had a nice uh, sort of entry point there to go for a heart shot, and it worked out perfectly. A melanistic, aggressive wild boar killed me and then I managed to get it with a heart shot. That was perfect. I couldn't have asked for any more and that was just such a cool experience. Like I said, just to have this one go aggressive out of all of the ones that were there, for the melanistic to go aggressive, just I don't know what the chances of that are but they have to be pretty slim is my point um and I just think that that was really cool so I was really really happy with that and I've been actually really excited to share that because yeah I don't think you will see a lot of clips of aggressive rare wild boar out there and especially not melanistics because they are just so rare but to have shot another one after shooting that first one i didn't think i'd shoot the first one so to have shot another one now is absolutely bonkers um both been females and i still haven't found an albino and i think i'm on like five or six black gold wild boar now which we kind of started the video off with so uh yeah just a wild experience but also those pictures of the female elk came out really really well and i got something i'm really happy with so i'll ping them up as i do my little outro here 
thank you guys so so much for watching i know it's been a little while since i posted the last video my classic video that i had planned for the easter event honestly i spent so long trying to get all the clips recorded and then the main clip which had two trophy animals and an objective in it just completely vanished off my pc and i tried data recovery tools i tried everything to get that clip back and it just didn't come back so there will be a classic video i promise um with some trophies that i got during the easter event plus some other ones uh that i will have got between now uh, you know between then um and losing that clip and then actually posting it because i didn't have enough footage with that big clip going missing so i really am sorry about that but thank you all so so much for your patience and everything i really do appreciate it and yeah just thank you for all your support as always it's massively massively appreciated thank you so so much for watching really hope you've enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you